And welcome to the space weather. We're looking at the local yellow dwarf here in 109, uh, in 94 angstroms, actually. And we see a plage rising, which has no umbral cores, so no sunspots to report yet. Let's zoom in. Anyway, there's that active region. There's another area of some minor activity there south of it. This is so close to the equator that we are anticipating that it is cycle 24 activity. And let's show you the three, the 304 angstroms view here as there is a bunch of filamentary activity around the limbs also. Large filament there in the northwest. Doing a little dance. Zoom in on that one. There's that filament. No real uptick in the x-ray flux or anything yet, folks. A little bit of crown prominence is there in the south. And there's that active region. Again, not a sunspot. No umbra associated with that yet. It is a decent sized active region, though. And let's look at the GOES x-ray imager here real quick. See that bright spot. No B-class x-ray flares or anything like that yet. But there are some serious filaments being held in place right now. And we've been seeing quite a bit of ejecta, actually, despite such low levels of solar activity. Zoom that out. There's the current x-ray situation. And again, x-ray flux pretty flatline here, despite some activity rising. Solar wind speed has ramped down. And we're at a very low solar wind density now. Less than one proton per cubic centimeter, 0 0.77. Solar wind speed ramping down from yesterday is around 600 to 532 kilometers per second. We do see a shifting phi angle once again over the last, well, throughout the day so far today on October 28th. Possibly a coronal hole connection right here. Something to keep an eye on throughout the day. And there's the data from ACE looking corroborative. Could be a coronal hole connection signal right there. Are you aware that California is burning? Well, they had winds as high as 93 miles an hour yesterday. And we've left links to this Zero Hedge article if you want to read all about it. 180,000 residents ordered to evacuate just in Sonoma County. The next 72 hours will be challenging. Here's some more resources for you, which we've linked below the video. Here's the California Department of Forestry and Protection map. And we're hoping it'll load. As I'm sure they're getting a lot of traffic. And let me zoom out there. And there's the scenario. Quite a bit of California burning, even all the way down near San Diego region. And there's the list. At least Saddle Ridge is mostly contained. Kincaid is only 5% contained right now. Not good times for California. Here's the power map. And this is the PG&E's outage center. <laughs> and there are all the power outages right now. It looks to me like the pink ones are actually the PG&E shutting off the power on purpose. And so, lots of customers without power there in California. Links to this also below the video. Also linked to the Sonoma County incident map. This is a, another interactive map you can look at if you are interested in the scenarios there. Moving on. And here's the poweroutage.us map. See some power outages in Louisiana and Tennessee here. And over a million customers out of power in California right now. Links to this also below the video. And let's go back to space with this magnetosphere movie. And it's a pretty steady flow right now. Low density, although there is a density spike right at the end of the movie here. And we'll leave that there so you can see the timestamps. There's that density spike coming in right around 730 UT. And let's look at the ground magnetic perturbations next. I think. 
and there are the ground magnetic perturbations. There's 6 o'clock, there's 6.30. And so we see, we see a little bit of unrest really going on here as the fields are kind of all over the place. And so is the ionosphere. We'll get to it in a minute. 10.7 centimeter radio flux holding steady at 69 solar flux units just below the orange line we've drawn in here. And let's look at cosmic rays real quick. Here's the Apatity Neutron Monitor. There's the latest data from there. And there's Barentsburg. Here's Athens. Last 30 days of activity at Athens Neutron Monitor. Next we'll check out Mexico City's Cosmic Ray Observatory. There's a scenario there. And by the way, you can access old data at Mexico. And here's Moscow, Moscow's neutron monitor. And lastly, here's Olu, Finland. And we'll look at DOMC and DOMB. There's the first one, DOMC. And there's DOMB Antarctica. Mostly back to sending data. And we've left links to the links to cosmic ray data page below the video as well if you'd like to look up the actual information about cosmic rays. Goes magnetometer is looking pretty sawtooth and spiky, and it's going to continue to be that way. And again, keep an eye on that active region, as that is going to dictate what's going on. Let's make sure we have the latest data on the gong, too, and play that. As we see, there's some current sheet polarity indecision going on here. This data, 1 hour and 58, 51 minutes old. Check out the last frame. You can see we're back in the South Pole oriented portion of the current sheet there. And that has to do with that active region pulling the fields around. In fact, let's look at a different view here. And here's the line of sight. This is the uh, line of sight field plot. It's going to show you the Z fields shown in green and red, as well as the B field shown in blue. And no real changes coming yet as a result of that active region. So this is another thing to watch throughout the day. We're expecting to see this uh, experience some changes associated with that active region. And the planetary K index holding steady at a KP of 3 for an extended period coming off of that minor geomagnetic storm. Electron flux quite high as forecasted and we see some significant charging hazards relativistic electrons at least the greater than two mega electron volts variety at very high levels and there's the graph of that and there are the charging hazards and it's looking pretty charged especially in the Tropic of Capricorn and here is the ionosphere movie courtesy government of Australia Bureau of Meteorology and the ionosphere is looking quite anomalous right now, especially on the nighttime side. Northern Hemisphere highly discharged. Southern Hemisphere quite charged. And the sun, the sun facing portion, not particularly charged. I don't know if that helps anybody with anything, but that's what I'm seeing. And there's the latest image at 745 UT. Next, we'll do the earthquake rundown, now that we've looked at the ionosphere. And just about 24 hours ago, we see a 4.5 at Chile. By the way, we're making this video at 3.57. And that's a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The clocks go back on November 3rd, I believe. <coughs> Next, we see a 4.3, that one at depth, 229 kilometers there, at Argentina. Looks like the largest quake was a 5.2 in China over the past 24, but let's go up the list. 4.3 at Puerto Rico, largest quake we've seen in the Caribbean for a while, probably a week or two. Here's a 4.6 at El Salvador, Central American quake. And here's a deep quake at New Zealand. Shout out New Zealanders. 
If you felt that quake, please leave a comment. Looks like it's actually on the island. And there's a location of that. Heads up for a larger quake at the surface, New Zealand. Largest quake of the past 24 appears to be this 5.2 at China. Looks like it's nowhere near a plate boundary. What say you? Here's a 4.7 at Mexico. That one coming in at 1839 UT. Followed by a 4.9 at Papua New Guinea. That one's at depth of 152 kilometers. 4.7 at Argentina as the deep quakes continue to roll in. Western South America is still my favorite place for the end of the seven magnitude earthquake drought, which is a very, very extended drought of seven plus magnitude earthquakes. Here's a 5.1 at Argentina. That one at the surface. Although I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that off of alert. I wouldn't get off of alert if I were located anywhere near the western portion of South America. 5.1 in Indonesia is next. That one coming in at 4.07 today. And it looks like a quake just struck California while we were doing the video. That 3.7 just came in. Please leave a comment if you felt that quake. Or if you felt a quake in the past 24. I've never felt an earthquake and they freak me out, even though I've been in several. And we've gone to windy.com to look at the pressure maps here. We see major high pressure systems dominating most of the western Arctic. And let's just let this play through 24 hours as we're looking for anomalous low pressure systems. Since those are associated with earthquakes, folks, I don't know if you were aware, check out quakewatch.net if you weren't aware of the science of forecasting earthquakes. You too can forecast earthquakes. Anyway, there's where things will be at 1600 Zulu tomorrow according to the GFS model on windy.com. Next, we'll do a volcano rundown. And it looks like a little downtick in volcanic activity here. Current contributors to volcanic aerosols and ash are Mount Aso, producing a 6,000-foot ash plume there in Japan. Sanjiang Api, exploding. Discrete emissions were still enough to produce a 7,000-foot plume of ash. Mount Takono, exploding. 7,000 foot ash plume there. Popoca de Petal, its ash has dissipated. And Sabancaya, still exploding down there in Peru. Puff emissions producing a 25,000 foot ash plume. Please do not do the Fosbury flop over Sabancaya's caldera. Here's where stuff is in the solar system. Were you aware? New moon. It's new moon's coming. And there's where things will be in one week. Were you aware of the new photos of Pluto? Well, Pluto's far side has been photographed at unprecedented resolutions by the New Horizons spacecraft. And links to this article from Universe Today. Pluto looking less and less boring the closer we look at it. Also links to this article here, NASA's own page. We see a lot of features on Pluto, and uh, here are some of them. One of the things that are interesting that we see are these, these pillars of methane ice, similar to what you find on Earth. I think they have a photograph of the earthly ones. Anyway, there are lots of images here for you to peruse, including lots of bullseye style craters which look like electrical discharge crate craters and yeah Pluto not as boring as you thought people thought it was a featureless ball of ice and that couldn't be further from the truth and there are significant differences between the portion that faces the the Sun and the portion that doesn't face the Sun and an interesting world with some interesting features that were not previously seen. Here's a current lightning map, courtesy lightningmaps.org. Next time you hear thunder, check out lightningmaps.org. 
Here's a value-added service. As we continue to see snow, it's not even November yet. Colorado still getting significant snow, as well as Nebraska, some in Kansas, Utah, some in New Mexico, even a little bit in North Dakota. And here's a U.S. water vapor map. I do see an interesting convergence zone here right down the east coast, which is kicking off some lightning. And some interesting sudden cloud nucleation kicking off down there. It looks like, let's zoom in. And there's the area we're talking about. See that interesting convergence zone creating some pressure gradients there. It looks like sudden evaporation coming out. Is it because of electrical current in the atmosphere? You better believe it. Anyway, we see a anticyclonic system there trying to rotate clockwise. And uh, looks like some dry mass of air is still in control of things. Let's move on to the jet streams. And here's the jet streams of the Western world. We see some extreme bends in the jet streams here over the North Atlantic. Meridional jet stream flow at its finest, folks. And in the south, the same deal. Meridional jet stream flow. Nothing particularly coherent. Here's a view from the North Pole as well. We've got it doubled up, tripled up, and facing in the wrong direction in many spots. Here are the eastern jets. We'll let that play a minute, and then we'll move on to the... That's censored, and that's a sinkhole. Do you know the difference between your e and a hole in the ground? Is your YouTube channel censored like ours is and massively shadow banned? Are you a Generation Xer who's facing a bleak and impoverished old age? Well, now I'm a huge ageist, and this is part of the reason. Generational problems. I have a lot of beef with baby boomers, especially as they've pretty much destroyed the world economy and will continue to do so for the next 20 to 40 years. Child poverty, child poverty, employment, wages, home ownership, arrest records, in every category, Generation X, the 13th since the American Revolution, is doing worse than the generation that came before. Were you aware? Indeed, for the first time since the Civil War, the authors of the 13th generation keep reminding us young people are unlikely to surpass the affluence of our parents. Are you paying taxes to fund things like Social Security and Medicare? and expecting zero benefits from them like I am? Well, enjoy that, folks. Were you aware that the oldest generation Xers are in their late 50s? 47% have nothing saved for retirement, and only 13% have more than $100,000 saved? It's an interesting article, and it's pretty much entirely true. If you'd like to find out why I'm such an ageist, well, read the article. Links below the video to that. Are you familiar with Nextdoor.com? Nextdoor.com is a great networking site where you can network your neighborhood together. Would you like to be able to trade and barter with your neighbors? Would you prefer if your neighbors would send you an email or send you a message on Nextdoor instead of calling code enforcement because they think your grass is too long? Ha! Huh. Well, guess what? We'll be going to court with code enforcement on Halloween where we complain about their abusive process while a scum-sucking, bottom-feeding leech code enforcement officer is probably hiding in your backyard right now, measuring your grass with a tape measure. Please leave a comment if you've had run-ins with code enforcement, the lowest, most pathetic form of government which should be entirely abolished as they attempt to violate private property and create constitutional issues every day by enforcing, enforcing a bunch of nonsense via legal shakedowns of the people that pay the taxes that fund their salaries. Do you enjoy the content on our YouTube channel? Well, press like and subscribe, and thanks new subscribers, etc. We've got hundreds and hundreds of videos about space weather. We're even doing some movie reviews, and we're going to do Jeepers Creepers. But first, we're going to talk about funding the channel. Were you aware that Google and YouTube pay us precisely zero? They come up with a different reason every week. They demonetize our videos. They shadow ban us and throttle our content. And certainly, we're not providing any tax information 
because they're not paying us anything. So if you'd like to fund the channel, please do so via PayPal, for instance. Links below the video to that. Or perhaps via the Hemp Lucid campaign that we've set up for our spaced out viewers. It's the spaced out campaign. So if you're in the market for CBDs, why not buy them via our affiliate link? But mainly, our channel is funded via our patrons. So thanks, patrons, for being associate producers. We are not kidding about the credit crawl. It is going to happen. We are going to review the all-dressed ruffles. So it's, it's going to happen probably during the Jeepers Creepers movie review. We haven't forgotten about it. Thanks again, patrons. Check it out, patreon.com slash smashamash. Even if you refuse to even send us $1 a month, you will still receive some updates just by visiting the Patreon page, as some of our posts are public. So even if you can't open up your moldy, cobweb-encrusted wallet and send us 10 bucks a month, you still might get something just by visiting the publicly viewable page, patreon.com slash smashomash. Were you aware that we know less about what's going on in the Earth's oceans than we do what's going on on the surface of Pluto or the moon? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But anyway, there's an interesting infographic that we've cited here. It's showing you the depth of Lake Superior, where the Edmund Fitzgerald has sunk, Death Valley, the Great Slave Lake, Lake Baikal, the Burt Khalifa, the Burj Khalifa Tower. Did you know that at this depth, if you shoot a hole in a pressurized scuba tank, water will rush in instead of air rushing out? Did you, did you know that? Were you aware that when sperm whales dive down that deep, they come up covered in wounds and sucker marks, probably because of giant squids? Did you know anything about the Kola Deep Borehole? Were you aware that Russians are awesome? Anyway, they've dug the deepest hole in the world. Please leave a comment if you have a theory as to how come a bunch of hydrogen came out of that hole. Where did all the hydrogen come from, folks? Why is there so much hydrogen down there? Isn't that the lightest element? Please leave a comment. Anyway, interesting article here on Science Alert. So check out this one about how much of the ocean we don't see. Also, I would like to take a quick moment to talk about the Earth's heat latency to cite the fact that you can measure the Earth's atmosphere all day, all century, and all millennium. You still won't know the Earth's temperature. Have you ever had a doctor take your temperature by having you blow into a breathalyzer? No? He uses a thermometer because you're made out of water, like the surface of the planet? Huh. You don't say. We haven't forgotten about the movie review, folks. We watched Jeepers Creepers last night, and we're going to review it probably today. In the meantime, check out the movie. Uh, we rented it on Amazon, I believe. An interesting tale with interesting origins, and we'll talk all about it as it is an interesting way that the movie got made and even named. And thanks, Smash Team. We are out of here, but first we're going to show you one bonus a feature. The sun in 171 angstroms. Check out that filament in the northwest, looking like a spiral, perhaps forming a Birkeland current there to uh, inform you of the fact that Birkeland currents seem to rule the universe. There's that active region, probably the best view we can get of it right now. Love the 171 angstroms view. In fact, let's take an even closer image for an added bonus feature. There's the most current image in the ultra high res close up. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Remember, when you're staring at the sun, don't drink. And if you drink, stare at the sun anyway. Don't drive. Support the channel by pressing like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Become a patron. Donate via PayPal. Learn our mission. Links to all that stuff below the video. Remember, when you're staring at the sun, don't drink. And if you drink, stare at the sun. Use the proper instruments like the SDO. Just don't drive. And since it'll never be now again, may the solar wind be at your back and the atherosclerosis absent from your veins.